Um, and I think that the the um, you you mentioned um, uh, the French Merc. I believe a French. It was a French Merc fighting in Ukraine who was the first to really really go big on the fact that he was fighting alongside uh, hardcore committed neo Nazis, and right. he was shocked by the profusion of um, swastika tattoos. You've done an enormous uh, number of of sterling work on neo-Nazism in Ukraine, Alex. So perhaps you would like to discuss um, the, uh, the role of right sector and Azov and other um, uh, fascist paramilitary groups in Ukraine. Yes, I mean, certainly. Uh, so, I mean, my, my ongoing argument is that the Western media for years since... 2014 uh, made an explicit effort. In fact, it was it it was quite clear that the media, I think, was getting direction from the intelligence communities um, to to cover these topics um, because they wanted at that point to uh, to have a, a friendlier face to the people conducting an ethnic cleansing in Donbass, and they didn't want the Nazi association. So they had the media hype it up in order to um, kind of uh, make a policy change in Kiev, yeah. right? Um, so here we have BBC um, 2014 during the Maidan talking about right sector. The most organized and perhaps the most effective were a small number of far right groups. When it came to confrontations with the police, it was often the nationalists who were the loudest and the most violent. A group calling itself the right sector is perhaps the largest. Its members can be seen marching around Kiev in columns of about a dozen. Mostly they carry baseball bats. Да, в некоторых людях она есть проступает. Как бы, ну, чтобы была единая нация. Мне как бы нравится эта идея единой нации. Я поделил, я хочу, чтобы ну, нация была единая, чтобы один народ, одна страна, одна нация. Как бы, чтобы чистая нация. Ну, не то, что там, как бы у Гитлера, как было. Ну, в своем роде немножко, ну, маленько, но было что-то своя нация. Украина будет только для Украины. Our general mission to totally ruin uh, chains that uh, connect our country with the uh, imperial uh, power uh, from the past. And that being Russia? Yes. Are you a Nazi? Uh, no, I don't think I'm a Nazi. I'm a Ukrainian nationalist. Uh, what does that mean? The main confrontation is uh, about that some ethnic groups uh, have uh, control uh, many business structures, some economic, some political forces. and uh, Which ethnic groups? Uh, 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 Russians and Jews and the Poles. It may be uh, every, some... Uh, Non-Ukrainian group control a huge percent of some economic or political uh, power. And uh, C-14 is affiliated with a political party called Svoboda, or Freedom, which now controls four ministries in the new government, including the Ministry of Defense. Two of its MPs were recently photographed brandishing well-known far-right numerology. 8-8 eight, eight stands for the eighth letter of the alphabet, H-H. Heil Hitler. <laughs> but it's clear that it was the radical groups who kept up the pressure on Viktor Yanukovych, and many of them feel that this really is their victory. So there we have it. Uh, Yevon Kadas, the leader of C14, as I reported early on uh, in uh, two years ago when, when the war started. Um, Yevon Kadas and C-14 got uh, contracts with the Kiev municipal uh, government to essentially ethnically cleanse Roma people. And they chase them around. And there's videos of them tearing down Roma encampments with axes and, uh, you know, doing all kinds of uh, uh, fascist salutes. Um, Yevon Kadas, I, I posted another video years ago now um where he says that if it were not for the neo-nazis at maidan uh it would have been a gay parade so <laughs> um and, and and he said and this was just a, uh, this 
recording I'm talking about was just a, a month before uh, Russia uh, launched the military operation. So he says, we wanted a war. You know, we have, we like fighting, we like killing. Um, and, and, and so the goal has been to, um, you know, get rid of uh, undesirables, Jews, Roma, and um, and Russians in particular, gays as well, and gays. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you go and if you if you, I think it's Open Democracy has extensive uh, reporting on um, on Azov, um, shutting down gay parades and beating people up in in Mariupol. But I think really Mariupol was the turning point in, in this because. Um, because it was Azov that for so long uh, was in charge there and was, you know, because of its location in, uh, just, you know, south, southwest of Donbass, um, it was used as a staging ground for all the attacks. And it was, it was Azov um, as the tip of the spear. And so when Russia started trying to take Mariupol, there really needed to be a a, a whitewasher rebrand of Azov, mm -hmm. and so that's when you started getting the heroic defenders of democracy messaging. You can you can pick up from there if you like. Yeah, sure. So I mean, I think that I mean Mar Mariupol is it, it, it's very interesting because <clears throat> um, people who uh, I deny or try and diminish like the repression. In Donbass, they often point to the the fact that the civilian casualties in the conflict dropped precipitously, like um, from from 2014 onwards, and it's like they went from yeah. great many thousand to only a few thousand. That rather like ignores, possibly deliberately, possibly just out of ignorance, the fact that these fascist Western-backed and funded and armed and trained paramilitary groups like Azov, they yeah. ruled areas of like Maria Pol with an iron fist. Yeah. Like absolutely. And a lot of their 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 work was it, it wasn't concerned with killing people, it was just instilling absolute terror into the local population. Yeah, and, and going after, you know, gay pride, going after feminists. Yeah, you smashing know, up Roma camps. Yeah. yeah. And 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 but not only that, it's also the fact that um, the, 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 they engaged in, in widespread kidnap because um, one thing that the, uh, uh, the the two breakaway republics, the Lugansk and Donetsk People's Republics, um, did was that they when, when they captured Ukrainian soldiers, they would use them as hostages for trades. Yeah, um, and then. So in that context, Ukraine needed or wanted people to trade. So they would start kidnapping people um, off the street and right. saying, well, if you want these people back, then you have to give us our soldiers. There was a UK immigration court, I believe it was in July 2020, um, that, that this, this obviously got no coverage whatsoever. It, there were two Ukrainian draft dodgers who were seeking asylum in the UK and the court found in their favour, they allowed them to stay in the UK on the basis that serving within the Ukrainian armed forces would necessitate carrying out war crimes, right. including kidnap of civilians. Yeah. And uh, uh, and so therefore, uh, it was legitimate for them to refuse the draft um, as a result. Um, yeah. And so, which is, um, it, it's quite remarkable, really. And recently, I think it was at the end of last year, there was a German, um, the, the evil Germans, um, there was a German broadcaster called ZDF, which um, they, they sent a team of reporters to Marine yeah, and there is a a two camera interview by one of the the reporters they sent, um, talking clearly in a state of mystification and bewilderment about how well it's a very peaceful city that's being rebuilt. People are going about their business. Uh, everything's very calm. There's no like military presence here at all. And it's like, well, I mean, do you get it yet? Like, you know, it's just that, the, 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 yeah, they were expecting to walk into some hor horrendous. Um, uh, hunter style like right. chili coup like in right. situation and no everyone's just getting getting on because there's no more as of uh, yeah <laughs> they they all surrendered but i think it's important to note as well that on top of funding training and um uh, sponsoring these fascist paramilitary groups the, the, in turn these fascist paramilitaries in ukraine have sought to export their neo-nazism abroad particularly in europe yeah there is a group called Centuria, which is one of two allegedly separate uh, groups in Ukraine that, that, that sprung out of Azov, uh, both called Centuria, but nothing, that to right? do, nothing to do with one another, <laughs> al al allegedly. Um, one of these Centurias is uh, trying to put together um, 
citizen armies um, across Europe and runs fascist youth camps where people do the, the Heil Hitler salute and yeah. um, yes, you know, young boys and girls go hiking together and I'm sure are indoctrinated in, in Mein Kampf. Uh, but then this other centuria is in, it, it, which sprang out of Azov is involved in proselytizing neo-Nazism within the wider Ukrainian armed forces but also major uh, Western uh, uh, armies as well. There is a, a, a extremely detailed and, and well-researched report that was produced in September 2021 at George Washington University, no, no less. less. No <laughs> less. This is so. This is what's absolutely astonishing. Is there is yeah, a, 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 a September 21 report by George Washington University Institute for European, Russian, and Eurasian Studies. Um, it, it, the report was written by a Ukrainian national living in DC. Um, who had previously written for US government propaganda network Voice of America mm -hmm. and also produced work for the alleged independent open source investigative outfit Bellingcat, which, as we know, is actually funded by the British and American governments um, to endorse their narratives um, and give them the appearance of objectivity. Despite the fact that this author's pedigree and background, the report was completely ignored by the media. It didn't get any pickup anywhere at all, apart from the one article in the in the Jerusalem Post. Now, if you can draw up the reports, oh, it's, uh, it's oh, been okay. up, yeah. Okay, uh, so yeah, um, the, I would urge uh, viewers to read this because well, read Kit's article at the Gray Zone. Uh, you don't need to or, read the or, whole or ninety-three certain, page, or, yeah, 93 <laughs> academic <pages>. paper. <laughs> yeah, but so I mean, to give you an example of just just one of the people featured in this and, and that they explicitly state that they are an, a, uh, an order of European traditionalist, traditionalist military officers that ha that seeks to reshape Ukraine's military along right wing ideological lines. Yeah, uh, where, where, whereas Azov was kind of like uh, comprised of like former soccer hooligans yes. turned neo-Nazis. Uh, this was like at least the impression I get is Centuria was kind of more of an elite military grouping, uh, started off as like, you know, maybe something like a secret society yes. and expanded from there. Right. Yeah. So Centur Centuria, um, it, it, they openly boasted on Telegram about how they, um, uh, con their members had been part of Western military training programs and trained alongside um, Western elite forces, uh, military forces, and uh, uh, Western military training institutions. Um, to give you one example of an individual cited in the report, there was an, an individual tied to Azov who attended an 11-month officer training course at Britain's esteemed Sandhurst Royal Military Academy starting in 2020. Um, this, it, it, I mean, Sandhurst is where the creme de la creme, allegedly, of the British Army are trained. The U Ukraine's Ministry of Foreign Affairs celebrated his graduation very publicly and published this lengthy profile video of, of, uh, of this individual's path to military leadership. Um, and then the, the George Washington University report notes that he took a keen interest in uh, disseminating uh, Azov's absolutely repulsive neo-Nazi ideology while he was at, at Sandhurst, which included creating a prom uh, narrating a promotional video for Centuria while he was there. He posted videos ab about Azov <coughs> from Sandhurst, along with um, clips uh, documenting his daily routine there. Um, and uh, he also gave an interview to Centuria's te Telegram channel um, in which he stated that he preferred training in Ukraine as British training for military officers put less, less emphasis on theory. Oh, yeah. um, I wonder what type of <laughs> theory um, he was learning. But the, the, so, yeah, I mean, this is deeply insidious and disturbing. And once, very curiously, once the report's author started reaching out to the organisations and indiv individuals um, and groups uh, named in his report, they all suddenly started deleting any and all trace of their online footprint, um, yeah. which was, of course, highly incriminating. And this included, you know, Ukraine's Ministry of Defense yeah. started a cleanup job. So they understood what a problem this was. Um, and so... And they, they were uh, based out of um, a particular base near Lviv, I think. Yes. Uh, which was basically um, where the NATO... Militaries would come to train. Yes, 
uh, Ukrainian soldiers um, in the CIA too. Yeah. Um, pr- you know, prior prior to the war, um, I have. Well, I think I tweeted this some time ago. Yeah, and this is from that same report. But uh, you have um, some black American service members in Ukraine training a member of Centuria. Uh, and you can see that he posted it on Instagram and tagged his location as Zimbabwe. Uh, not only that, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, he posted 1488 with, with that same photo. So, I mean, even there, I mean, they're racist and disrespectful towards the people teaching them how to fight Russia. Yes. Well, of course. I mean, why, why wouldn't you be? Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think that just more, more, more generally, and I, I think we can skip to Georgia after this. But there, the, the, it is important to note that this is not an anomaly. This is not an aberration. Um, the British and American intelligence and security apparatus has, for a very, very, very long time, used um, nationalists as their shock troops. They have sought to. Um, uh, promulgate nationalism um, uh, across the world because it's a very good way of um, of divide and rule um, and, mm. and they can also yes be turned turned into uh, spears heads against enemies like in Yugoslavia for instance um, right. the 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 West uh, started backing hardcore Holocaust denying Nazi venerating um, nationalist elements in Bosnia in Croatia um, uh, and uh, the, in in Ukraine itself, um, throughout the Cold War, they uh, the CIA and MI6, um, and also in the Baltic states as well, they had uh, close connections with um, uh, nationalist separatist uh, uh, elements there, and um, we see this is just a continuation of that. Um, this is no kind of blip in the radar. This is this is the norm, yeah. um, as it were. Um, funnily enough, uh, I mean, on the subject of hardcore, dangerous. Um, well, murder, let's 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 pa- let's pause because I, I have a few more things I want to say. Right now, I have a photo up of Centuria members sick sure. calling. Sure. Um, but I w- you know I would just add that uh, that you know for, for for the gray zone, I exclusively obtained from the Anti Defamation League. Uh, a whitewash of the Azov Battalion, um, you know, members of which uh, are linked to Centurion. You know, we could talk about Azov all day, <laughs> but um, n- no less Nazi than Centuria, right? Um, claiming that they've been reformed. And I've actually disproven that because they're, the basis for that claim by the ADL was that uh, Andre Beletsky was no longer associated with Azov Battalion and was merely the figurehead of uh, the National Corps, which is an Azov-linked um, uh, political party. Well, it actually happens to share the same office with the Azov Battalion. And wow. uh, not only that, but Beletsky is in charge of like a separate Azov regiment that's still Azov, but it's yeah. not called Azov anymore. Um, so, it's you know, over. yeah, over. right. <laughs> um, so, I mean, while you have the ADL saying people like this, the people on screen, Sig Holling, are reformed and yes. not a threat to Jews. Uh, any, you know, college student with blue hair is a raging anti-Semite, yes. you know, um, and poses a dangerous threat to the safety of Jews yes. across America. Indeed. So it's 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 just, you know, you it, I, I think stuff like this really um, reveals the uh, the cynicism of uh the of the ADL and of the Democratic Party. Yes, 